Millions of Muslims around the world are awaiting the appearance of an Islamic Messiah known as the Mahdi or the Twelfth Imam. Various branches of Islam have differing beliefs about the Mahdi. Shiite Muslims, for example, believe their savior was once alive but disappeared and will emerge a second time from this well located in a small village in Iran. Sunni Muslims also believe in a savior, but they believe the Mahdi is Muhammad's successor and is yet to come to earth. Author Joel Richardson has written several books on how Islamic beliefs relate to biblical prophecy, and his research suggests that the Mahdi of the Muslims and the Antichrist spoken of in the Bible are the same person. In his book, Mideast Beast, Richardson argues that the Antichrist will come from the Middle East and not from Europe, as has been widely taught by many modern prophecy teachers. Well, for more on this, author Joel Rich Richardson is now joining us. Well, let's, let's get right into it, Joel. Um, you say the Mahdi is the Antichrist. Why do you say that? Well, when you look at Islamic tradition, sacred tradition, as they describe their primary Messiah figure, the Mahdi, there's numerous striking similarities to what the Bible describes with regard to the Antichrist. They believe he'll rule for a period of seven years. They believe he'll rule specifically from Jerusalem on the Temple Mount. Um, they believe he'll be a religious, military, political leader that will cause Islam to be supreme throughout the world. Uh, filled with anti-Semitism, anti-Christ, anti-Christian uh, spirit and, and doctrine. It's, it's amazing how the two concepts, messianic concepts, really line up in a, I call it an anti-parallel. Um, do you see this sort of gaining traction now in the Muslim world, specifically with ISIS? Yeah, tremendously. I mean, whether we're talking on the side of Iran, thoroughly apocalyptic, the the... The regime that we're now, our government is potentially allowing them to receive nuclear weapons. Uh, and then on the other side, you have ISIS, who are completely driven by their apocalyptic prophecies. And it's not just the radicals. Even mainstream Muslim uh, periodicals are now talking about how Islamic prophecy is being fulfilled. So much of the Islamic world now is being driven by their prophecies. What are the differences? Because I think a lot of Americans don't understand that, that there are fundamental differences in Islam. What are the differences between the theology of Iran and the theology of ISIS? Uh, it's just a difference in terms of where does the Messiah come from. Uh, of course, the, in Iran, they're Shia. They believe he'll be a Shia. Uh, and they believe he's a specific individual. The Sunnis believe that he'll just sort of emerge as, as this leader. And then, of course, he'll be a Sunni. Hasn't, in history, hasn't there been a, a Mahdi? I mean, you look back at uh, Sudan 120 years ago, there was one. He won a tremendous military victory against the British and General Gordon, cut off his head uh, and stuck it on a pole outside of Khartoum. Right. So uh, hasn't this been, been around before? Yeah, there's been several historical Mahdi claimants. They've all raised up bloody uh, revolutions and so forth, but never in history have we had the information revolution, the connectivity that we have. If there were to be a false Mahdi claimant today, the potential uh, tremendous negative consequences for the world would be tremendous. What, what would you think it would take for that person to unify the two camps uh, and for people to acknowledge him? In the, just in the Muslim community? Success. Mm. It's that simple. If a Muslim leader is able to unify large segments of the Islamic world and show success, then Muslims will get behind him. And of course, from a biblical perspective, you know, we know that in the last days there's going to be lying signs and wonders. The Antichrist, the false prophet will do these things. You get that type of grassroots movement behind an individual, the potential, as I said, for a a massive movement throughout the Islamic world is tremendous. How, how does your version differ from the traditional version? You, you even hear, you know, whether it's Nero through Domitian, there were Roman emperors who fulfilled it. Uh, then you hear uh, there's going to be a 10 nation confederacy coming out of Europe. Um, then you hear, wasn't Hitler, uh, at least a type of Antichrist. Um, how, how do you deal with those? A few basic premises premises that I come at the scriptures with. One is that it's Israel-centric. So a lot of prophecy teachers have said he's going to come out of Europe. 
What's clear is that the Bible, the testimony of the prophets are thoroughly Jerusalem and Israel centered. The whole story revolves around Jerusalem. When you look at the language of the prophets, the tribes, the regions they're pointing to, they're always naming Middle Eastern nations. So it's a very Middle Eastern centric story. Secondly, the story is very day of the Lord, return of Jesus centric. The story revolves around the return of Jesus. So we're not looking in the first century with Nero. We're not looking at last century with Hitler. We're looking at the events that will surround the return of Jesus and are yet to come. Well, what would you say to, to someone who, who would say, well, this is just another type? Uh, how can a Mahdi, uh, a, a Muslim Messiah, how could he bring the whole world under his sway? Well, first of all, I don't know that he's going to necessarily bring every single last nation under his sway. The scriptures are clear that there will be nations that will be at war with the Antichrist till the very end. Um, so a lot of people talk about him having this global rule. I think it's going to be a massive rule. I think throughout the world right now, you have Muslims in every nation, some nations much more than others. I think if the Muslim majority nations of the world were unified together, that alone would be enough to fulfill the prophecies of the Bible. But you throw in some wild cards, you throw in wars and, and so many other things. And I think that Islam is uniquely custom tailor made to fulfill that which the prophets were speaking about, whether geographically, whether theologically, whether it's their anti-Semitism, whether it's their numbers. Uh, in so many ways, I think that we can say that this is that beginning to emerge right before us. Well, they certain, certainly fulfill what Daniel prophesies, that he will kill the holy people. I mean, they seem to be quite bent on that and wiping Israel off the map and yeah. driving them to the sea. Yeah. Last question. There, there are a lot of religions with messiahs, whether it's Hinduism with the Kalki, Buddhism with Maitreya, even Taoism has a messiah. Uh, that is all triggered at the end times. Uh, what would you say to somebody who says, well, the Antichrist has to fulfill all of those? Uh, how, do you, how do you respond to that? <clears throat> I think the end times are going to be a lot more messy than we often think. We think it's going to just be black or white. You're either on the good guy side or the bad guy side. Um, I think that, again, when we acknowledge the Israel centricity of the story that they're telling, we simply look at a map. We look at thousands of miles in every direction around Israel. We see Muslim majority nations. We see Christians being slaughtered. Um, I think that, I think that all of the uh, identifying marks are there. I, I think that there's going to be, you know, folks down in Texas, you know, ch -ch -ch, you know, I'm not going to submit to no Antichrist. You're going to have Hindus. You're going to have people on all different sides of the spectrum. Um, but I think there is one dominant global force that will be at the tip of the spear, if you will, uh, of, of the system of the Antichrist. All right, Joel. The book is called Mideast Beast, and it's available through Amazon or wherever books are sold. I encourage you to get it and get informed. We need to be uh, understanding the times that we're in and, and what, what exactly we face. Uh, if you think Islam is a religion of peace, get this book, and you'll understand how they're specifically following uh, their own own prophecies, and they're pursuing them vigorously. Joel, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me on. All right.